Hello and welcome to another episode of What Would That Sound Like? The show where I take the ideas of today's top thought leaders and break them down and show you how to communicate them to your teams, companies, and conferences. I'm Sean Patrick, and today we're looking at Morton T. Hansen's book, Great at Work. I'm gonna break down three simple and easy steps for you or your team to be not just good, but great at what they do. Um, we're gonna focus on working smarter and not harder because it's not just talent that gets us to the top. It's not just talent that gets us to be great at what we do, but it's being smart about the way that we work that keeps us there and keeps pushing us forward. So let's take a minute and hear what that might sound like. All right, so most of us in this room are at least good at what we do, if not great at what we do. Maybe a little bit too humble, too modest to say it out loud, but I'll say it for you. A lot of us are good, if not great at what we do, and we should be always looking at ways to become better, to become more efficient, to provide a better product or service to our clients and customers. Now, what we have to know, though, is that being great at what we do, being great at work, it's more than just talent and more than just effort. It's not about working harder, it's about working smarter. Now the chances are you've probably heard that phrase before, work smarter, not harder. And today I'm gonna give you the three A's of working smarter and not harder, the three A's of getting great at what you do. So the first one is this, if you're a note taker, write this down. The first A is avoid. Avoid work altogether, just stop working. <laughs> of course I'm joking, it does stand for avoid, but here's what you need to avoid. You need to avoid multitasking. Avoid multitasking. Now most of us think that multitasking is productive. In fact, if you're anything like me, it feels like if I'm not working on a bunch of stuff at once, I'm not being productive. So not multitasking is the opposite of being productive. But the truth is that when we, when we can't give one thing our full attention, it doesn't get done at the right speed, it doesn't get done efficiently, effectively, it doesn't get done at the rate and the value that we're supposed to be getting those things done because our attention is divided. Look, it's, it's not about working harder, it's about working smarter. And we accomplish that by doing less things at once. So focus on one thing at a time and make that one thing your priority. By tackling too much at the same time, you're gonna spread your attention too thin, and the truth is you're not gonna be more productive, you're not gonna be getting more done. You're actually going to be wasting your time, your effort, your energy. You're gonna be tricking yourself, you're gonna be feeling like you're doing more and being more productive, but actually you're not. Think of it this way. Imagine yourself in a room with three people, and those three people you are having three distinct and different conversations with at the same time. Jenny is trying to talk to you about uh, Q4 sales. Tim is trying to talk to you about uh, our vision and our values and what we're gonna focus on in 2020. And then and Jessica wants to talk about a, uh, a workplace dispute she has with a coworker. Imagine if you're trying to juggle all three of these conversations at the same time. You may hear one sentence here and get an idea here, but then someone in the middle, they want your feedback. Are any of these conversations gonna get the focus that they deserve? Of course not. Are any of them going to get done at the same rate or? or as fast or faster than if you were focusing on one person or one conversation at a time. No, because you're dividing yourself, you're spreading yourself thin between these three things. Now it's obvious when we talk about it in those terms, but we somehow forget when it comes to accomplishing things that it's the same thing. If you're multitasking and focusing on too many things at once, you're actually not being more productive, you're being less. So focus on one thing at a time and become obsessively focused on that thing so it gets all of your attention and gets done the way you need it to. So that's the first A. The second A is assess. The second A is assess. What I want you to do is assess your work and redesign it to focus not just on productivity, but on value. Let me say that again. Assess your work to focus on value. What is the value that you provide as a boss, as a team member, as a team leader, as a product or a service? What is the value that you provide? Figure out what that is. Focus on the way your work provides value, not just productivity, not just efficiency. All of those things are great, but if we lose out on the value of what we're trying to give, the value of what we're trying to communicate, then actually we're missing out on the whole point. Let me give you an example. Take for example, a doctor who redesigns their whole schedule to see twice as many patients as they could, as they, they could before. They used to be able to see 10, now they can see 20. Well, they've doubled their productivity. But that's not necessarily the value 
in a doctor. If they double their productivity and double the amount of patients that they see, but their diagnoses are becoming less and less accurate. People aren't getting the care that they need. Maybe they're being misdiagnosed and they're getting sicker or they're even passing away. You see, a doctor's value is what they can provide to each patient, not just how many patients that they see in one day or one time. So productivity can actually fly in the face of or become the enemy of the value of your work. While productivity and efficiency, incredibly important and great things to focus on, if it is at the detriment of focusing on the value that you provide, then it's not worth it. So the second A is assess your work and redesign your schedule to focus on value. The third and final A is assemble. Assemble. Now this has to do with you and your teams, the people that you work with. I want you to assemble them and fight and unite. I almost let that be, uh, that A be uh, attack, but that just didn't seem to communicate the right feeling and emotion. <laughs> the third A is assemble with your teams. You want to get them to fight and ignite in meetings. How many of you guys have been in a meeting where you feel like that was the biggest waste of time? Yeah, how many have you been in just this week that are like that? Yes, meetings can feel like that when they're not engaging, when they're not focused, when people aren't contributing. So we wanna have an atmosphere where people feel comfortable to exchange ideas, to debate ideas, to figure things out together. So what you wanna do is let people debate and let them speak their minds in meetings. That's gonna let the ideas flourish rather than having yet another silent meeting where no one feels like they wanna contribute and nothing gets changed and no one challenges the status quo. You shouldn't be having a meeting if it's not of good use, if it's not productive, efficient, and moves you forward in terms of what your value is. If everyone's just sitting there, it should just be an email. How many meetings have you sat through or walked out of that you felt like, I survived another meeting that should have just been an email? Yes, we all have. So don't let your meetings be like that. Encourage healthy debate in your teams. Let them speak their minds so that ideas can flourish. Keep it short though. Don't let it go off the rails because if people's feelings start getting hurt, it gets tricky. If people start going on tangents, it's hard to rein it in. So keep it short and unite the team. Make sure that at the beginning of the meetings, there's an agreement that whatever you guys come to, whatever conclusion that you as the boss come to, we're gonna be okay with that and we're gonna agree with it. Otherwise it becomes difficult when someone throws out an idea that they think is genius and perfect and you don't go with it. Let me give you a quick example. One of the teams I used to lead and work on was a team of myself and five women. And it was honestly one of the most fun teams to be a part of. It was a great time. I, I look back on that with such fondness, but I always had this fear that by making a decision, I would be communicating to these five incredible women that what you say is okay, but I'm the man here, I'm the boss. So I'm gonna make a decision. So I was hesitant to do anything other than compile all of our ideas and then just whatever we came up with run with because I didn't want it to feel like I was mansplaining or any whatever you wanna call it, taking the, the reins as if just because I'm a man I get to do that. But that's not what it is. It's because I was the head of that team that I could do that. So what I did was at the beginning of these types of meetings, I told them, hey, I wanna get your opinion on this. I wanna, I wanna hear your thoughts on it. Ultimately, at the end of the day, since I'm the one who's responsible for if this goes well or if it doesn't, I hold uh, the, the consequences of this personally. Whatever decision I decide, that's what we're gonna go with, but it will not be without your input, uh, your thoughts, your creativity, that we put this thing together. So they knew that even if we didn't go with their ideas, even if it wasn't just a hodgepodge of ideas, which is a terrible way to go, don't do that, trust me. Even if they knew that I had to overrule something or I had to take my favorite idea that I thought would work best, they didn't get hurt about that because they knew that I held the consequences and the responsibility for that. And they trusted me to do that because they felt heard, they felt known, and they felt like they were a part of the discussion. So you wanna unite the team and you wanna just give a little vision. Tell them at the beginning of the meeting what this is about and why. So that's the three A's of not just working good, not just being good at your work, but being great at your work, being great at work. So you can take these three A's and you can apply them to your life, uh, to your team's life right now. Avoid multitasking, assess and redesign your work to focus on value, and then assemble your team to fight and then unite. If you can start doing those three simple things, you'll go from being good to great at what you do.
Now that's something like it could sound like whether you're communicating it to your team or a large group of people. What I love is it's so bite-sized. It's something that we can all start doing today. We can uh, focus on stuff, uh, individual tasks instead of multitasking. We can um, take a look and try to figure out what our work provides in terms of value so we know the difference between value and productivity and how they can kind of be at odds with each other at times. And then creating a culture where your teams feel heard and understood and know that their opinions are desired and value is valued is really going to be an awesome Awesome way to get buy-in from your team and get good cohesion there. With that, I hope you enjoyed it. If you ever want to get a hold of me, you can use my personal email address. Address, not my personal email address. That's for personal use only. You can find me at seanpatrickdj at gmail.com. That's S-E-A-N patrickdj at gmail.com. If you want to chat or connect, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram at seanpatrickdj at any of those places. I would love to be a part of your network. If you've got something coming up, a keynote, don't forget to check out the links down here because I'm going to send you a free P free PDF of all the things you need to know before your first keynote to make sure you're prepared. If there's anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll see you right back here next week on What Would That Sound Like?